This is a sputter profile of a multi-layer material. The first thing we will do is to identify what this profile looks like by doing a very rough estimate of the intensities based on uh, regions. So I've automatically created regions on all of these high resolution spectra and what we will do is we will go to the report spec page and using the custom report we'll copy through the named names for the regions into the name formula field so that when I say area report I get a profile in terms of intensities as a function of etch time then I say add profile and what that did was it added a profile to the original data file so that if I do control F8 I will switch to the perspective of the depth profile so if I select here a line of spectra and display them and then I do control F8 this line here marks the 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 point on the profile that was created using the data collected from these regions and if I wanted to see a range of these spectra where do these spectra appear let's actually do a different set let's go from here to here say and I do control F8 then a pair of cursors indicate points in the profile came from uh, within the spectra so if I go back again you can see these spectra here all contributed to these points in the profile now as an alternative way of indicating these features we can define regions on one of these data so let's go for the titanium and what I'm going to do is create a region let's give it a mean background type so we get a straight line indicating the mean value within the interval and what we can do is if I zoom into that region again let's zoom out a bit and then step we can create another region and what we do is we identify the spectra that produce these titanium peaks let's step again I'm holding the shift key down so that I'm picking up the region limit that is most recently created and each time I'm defining a region so now when I do control F8 because I've got regions defined on this particular trace when I do control F8 what it does is it doesn't just mark up one band of spectra it's marking up each and every one that came from those regions so if I do control F8 and go back again and again go back to the one that I've got my regions defined on what I need to do is identify each one of these layers as being titanium and if I know what they which layers are titanium I can then adjust the etch time per cycle to allow for the fact that these are etching at a different rate from the silicon so let's carry on with this one I will mark up and then step and step and there are 10 layers to this one so we'll take a little bit of time to to do each one of these each time I hold the shift key down to make sure that I pick up the last created region and that looks like we're done so let's see now I've used this titanium trace here to select out of this profile layer in terms of etch time all of the spectra that correspond to titanium and control F8 
then gives me a set of spectra that I can identify as being titanium as opposed to silicon. And what I'll do is I will record this by setting the sample ID for each one of these layers here instead of saying not specified we'll make that titanium oxide layer and I've, the only thing that I need to change is the sample ID because we've got different element transitions and we've got different block names so we don't want to modify those so these tick boxes alter which one of these is used to update the VAMAS blocks and the only one I'm going to update is this titanium oxide layer so I press OK and you can see if I go to edit mode that we now have these spectra have all been identified as having a significant contribution of titanium oxide now the reason this is important is, let's go back to the uh, etch times and the idea is that we use this button here for the experimental variable and the first thing we can do is we can convert the, these cumulative etch times into etch time or sputter time per cycle and having done that I have a sample for which it takes longer to sputter through the titanium oxide layer compared to the silicon so to accommodate this what I'm going to do is first of all identify all the titanium layers and I'm doing it using the sample ID that I previously set to these layers so this allows me to work out which of these spectra have titanium as the dominant uh, matrix and if I now go back and s use the scale selected experimental values I I'm going to apply to the selection which is why I needed to select them a new a scale value and I'm going to call that 0.65 so etching less material for each one of these selected spectra so I'm going to scale these these times by 0.65 so now you can see that the times have been adjusted on a cycle by cycle basis and only the titanium have been adjusted and so if I now go here I can then sum these cycle times to return it to uh, effectively the effective etch times it does claim that it's depth but it's not quite depth yet because what we need to do next is interpolate using these effective cycle times and let's say we've got a crater depth of say 70 microns and what it'll do using this interpolate option it'll take the values here and work out the appropriate steps in depth for a total crater depth of 70 microns so there's the profile that's now been adjusted where the scale is depth if I select them all apply report so now I get a trace as a function of the depth and if I create a profile on that basis I now have a depth scale and I have my intervals adjusted so that the the layers in this case now that's about 2.3 and that's about 2.3 so the, the depth has been adjusted by virtue of that scaling I performed.